Hello, I'm Jean Tung, one of the pediatric gastroenterologists here at the Mayo Clinic. Today I'd like to discuss with you two studies where children with inflammatory bowel disease use the specific carbohydrate diet in their treatment plan. First, let's discuss what the specific carbohydrate diet actually is. It was first described for celiac disease, but over the years, patients with IBD have been trying this as well. In general, it tries to avoid grains, refined sugars, and what people might describe as processed food. From a protein standpoint, you avoid processed meats and fish, soy products, and chickpeas. From a carbohydrate standpoint, canned fruits, canned vegetables, most veg sorry, root vegetables, refined sugar or sugar substitutes, chocolate, molasses, corn syrup, and maple syrup are all excluded. From a dairy standpoint, you avoid milk, cream, and commercial yogurt. Soy milk, nut milk, hemp milk, and rice milk are also excluded. So what can you actually eat? Well, fresh or frozen vegetables and fruits, most nuts, peas, and beans. You can have fresh or frozen meats, turkey, chicken, fish, and eggs. You can eat some hard cheese and homemade yogurt. Honey is allowed for sugars, and juice that is not concentrated is also allowed for sweetness. So how does it work? Well, we actually aren't sure, but it may change the bacteria in our gut, such as the microbiome, from a pro-inflammatory standpoint to an anti-inflammatory standpoint. So let's discuss our two studies. In a study published this August, pediatric gastroenterologists at Seattle Children's Hospital looked back at their patient charts and looked at the patients who decided to try the SC diet on their own. Of the 36 patients that started the study, 10 dropped out within a few weeks. That left 26 patients to follow, 20 with Crohn's disease, and 6 with ulcerative colitis. The shortest time on the diet was 3 months, while the longest time was 4 years. 11 patients only used the SE diet for therapy, while others were taking between 1 to 3 typical IBD drugs. That included mesalamines, methotrexate, azathioprine, and biologic agents such as Remicade, Humira, Simsia, and Stellara. Three were taking formula as well to boost their nutrition and calories. Half of the patients with Crohn's disease started this therapy while they had active Crohn's, while the other half were already in remission and trying to use this to maintain remission. Of the 26 patients who were on the diet for more than a few weeks, four found it difficult to continue while five did not improve. After six months of being on the SC diet, the activity scores for some of the patients with IBD improved. In these patients, some had improvements as well in their inflammatory markers, such as the ESR, or sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, and fecal calprotectin. Growth improved in some patients, but nine actually lost weight. The results of any colonoscopies or radiology studies during the study period were not reported. In a separate study published in 2014, pediatric gastroenterologists at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta enrolled 10 patients to take the SC diet over 12 weeks. In order to look for improvements in the small bowel inflammation, these patients took a pill camera at the beginning of the study, at 12 weeks, and one year. Three patients did not take other Crohn's medications. Several patients were taking methotrexate or azathioprine, one was taking mesalamine, and one was taking antiquart. None. None were taking biologic agents such as Simsia, Humira, or Remicade. Blood work and growth were monitored 12 weeks after the diet was started and at one year. One patient could not complete the study. Seven out of nine patients were able to continue the diet for one year. Activity scores dropped from the mild to moderate range at the beginning of the study down to mildly active to a few patients having remission at the end of the study. One patient, however, had scores that actually increased, meaning that they had more active disease. There were slight improvements in blood work, but most patients started with normal or near normal blood work. Four patients had fewer ulcers on the pill camera study, while two actually achieved healing 
of their small intestine. So what are my thoughts on the SC diet in these studies? These are among the first scientific studies looking at the SC diet for inflammatory bowel disease. I like that not only did the researchers measure patients' symptoms over time, but also their blood work and growth. It is encouraging to see that some patients had improvements in their blood work, growth, and a few even had healing of small intestinal ulcers. We do have to be cautious, however. Between these two studies, we're really only describing 36 patients. Some of them were already in remission in the beginning and trying to stay in remission. Those who had active disease tended to have milder to moderate disease as opposed to moderate to severe disease. Again, we note that a few patients lost weight and still had abnormal blood work at the end of the study periods. If you have more severe disease, this may not be the therapy to start with. If you're a picky eater, it may be difficult to stay on this diet. If you would like to try the specific carbohydrate diet, discuss this with your gastroenterologist and your IBT team and meet regularly with an experienced dietitian. Mm -hmm. You may need to take calcium or other supplements in addition to the SE diet. And as with any IBD therapy, closely follow your symptoms, your growth, your blood work, and consider with your gastroenterologist any repeat radiology or colonoscopy studies. Work with your IBD team to ensure you're actually improving or stay in remission. Thank you for listening today.